We all want power. We want lots of power. It'd be cool if we could get some mono blocks, right? I always wanted some mono blocks, but even if I bridged other amps to get a mono block, kind of, it's too expensive. Too expensive. So I missed out on the mono block loveliness of happiness time with wattage. Not today. That all goes away. Emotiva Basics A1, a $450 monoblock amp. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, hopefully not from a gas station, and let's talk about the Emotiva Basics A1 monoblock amplifier. Today's sponsor is the Happy Heart IEM holder from Sith Audio. We all know how difficult it is to keep track of our IEMs. That's why Sith Audio has solved the problem once and for all. That's right. They've come up with the Happy Hearts IEM holder. This isn't at all some kid's sunglasses holder, <gasps> even though there's sunglasses in it. Sith Audio audio file Happy Hearts IEM holder. Available for $212, guaranteed to make your IEMs more audiophile if you put them in here and then in the microwave. Not my best sponsor, but we got to go with it. Sometimes I just have to grab what's in within arm's length. This is the new Emotiva Basics A1. Okay, the Basics is their more affordable line of amplifiers. This is... This is a mono block, which means you're going to need two of these unless you, well, just want to run mono or you happen to have another, another amplifier that you can run mono in. Pretty plain on the front. You just have a strip here. Some LEDs will show up underneath it, blue LEDs. You have a power button here. You have a master power button on the back. These things come in at 22.5 pounds a piece. That means when you get two of them, it's going to be double that. Once again, pretty, pretty boring on the back. Boring is good though. I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing. You have one input right there in the center. One RCA input. No XLR, no fanciness. One RCA single-ended input. A pair of speaker binding posts. That's where your speakers are going to connect. Over here you have an IEC Apala connector and a master power switch. This is getting heavy. On the side right here, um, you can actually turn the LEDs off and then you have trigger input and output. You can connect this to another one um, and then uh, 12 volt trigger into this one so it'll turn everything on at the same time. If you don't like those LEDs, which I don't mind at all, but some people don't like them, well, you can turn them off. This also has auto signal sensing for voltage. If you're not 115 volts, if you're 230 volts, it does it automatically. Pretty straightforward. Now, I'm gonna try to take some pictures because I'm not gonna take this apart. This isn't mine. So I don't feel like I should be digging into it. I'm gonna try to take some pictures because there is a huge toroidal transformer. And the way that this thing is laid out is like things used to be laid out. Everything is discrete, shorter signal paths, the way things used to be. You, you know, everyone always says, man, they're not made like they used to be. Well, in this case, they are, and they are made at a price that is affordable. I said it before, $450 a piece, which means you can get a pair of these for $900. That sounds like a lot, but when you consider 200 watts RMS into eight ohms, 325 RMS into four ohms, and that's not a 10% total harmonic distortion. The eight ohm rating is at 0.05% THD. The 325 watt rating is 0.1% into four ohms. That's real power, baby, that you can use. That'll move some woofers. Hey, if you're new here, consider subscribing, turning on all the notifications, bells and whistles and whatever notifications they have, consider turning them on. I put out a lot of videos, over 440, I think, 
But if you're considering buying any Emotiva products and you're a veteran or a first responder, you get an additional discount. I think it's down at the bottom. You can click on, I think they goes through Verify Me, which if you're a veteran, you've probably gone through Verify Me before. It's a way to save more money on an already very affordable product. So what's the big deal with monoblocks? Why would one even want monoblocks? Outside of, well, maybe they're more power, but they're not always more power. Heck, this crown, turn this crown upside down. This crown right here, it's got a bunch of power. Not only that, but that thing can be bridged into a mono configuration. It, however, uses class D. So this is class AB with a traditional transformer. So what's the big deal with mono blocks? And why do people even want to use them when we have perfectly good stereo amplifiers that take up less space and are cheaper? Well, I think one of the prevailing thought processes is that by separating out the power supply, one gets an improvement in the sound. One gets a larger sound stage, better instrument separation. Is that true? I don't know. If you just search on the internet why mono blocks are better than stereo power amps, you can probably find a well, bunch of explanations. In my experience, was there an improvement? Yes, but I don't really have an apples to apples comparison here because I don't have any other mono blocks. The only other amps I have in here that put out anywhere remotely close to the power with the A1 is this thing's bigger and fancier cousin, the XPA Gen 3. That is a modular amplifier. It does not use a toroidal transformer. It uses a very fancy switching power supply. And it's not a monoblock. It's a two-channel amp. The XPA series is their step up from the Basics series. And Basics, well, it is exactly what it sounds like. Basics. But they're not basic. The, even the Basics amplifiers go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other companies' products that are twice as expensive. Three times. Four times. This amplifier sounds as good as amplifiers ten times its price point. How many times have you heard that? That is such the, that is the weirdest argument because everything sounds different. Amplifiers have different sound signatures, just like speakers, just like DAX, just like everything else. Now I'll say, uh, this amplifier sounds as good as uh, amplifiers that cost hundreds of times more. The XBA Gen 3 two channel that I have, which is a monster, I, it weighs about 50 pounds and it's huge. That puts out a, a lot of power. 300 watts into 8 ohms, 0.1%, two channels driven. 490 watts uh, into 4 ohms, two channels driven. So that's the closest thing I had in comparison to this for a power comparison. This is going to come in at $300. If you buy a pair of these, it's $300 less than the XPA Gen 3 two channel because that thing is very modular. You can put like 14 channels into there. I'm also gonna compare this sonically to the Schitt Vidar XBA Gen 3 and the Crown that I just got running and rolling, rocking and rolling, because the Crown itself comes in at $400. Now you can use that as a two channel amplifier, but you can also bridge that, get more power than you would out of this thing. So even though these aren't really apples to apples comparisons, I think, well, it's the best I can do because this is the only stuff I have here. I was, however, listening to this for a while. was not disappointed. But to see how good it is, I'm going to compare it to a more expensive two-channel amplifier. And since it's a mono amplifier, if people are right, if mono is better, if there's more instrument separation, if there's more detail retrieval, hopefully I'll be able to hear it. <laughs> to test these... Brand new monoblocks. I had them hooked up to the Gashelli Labs J2. Well, actually I had them hooked up to the Akitika PR102, which is a fully functioning preamp. Gashelli Labs J2 was feeding it. Then I had that going into two Emotiva Basics A1s out to a pair of Elac Unified 2.0s. And I know I use the Elac Unified 2.0s a lot for sound testing, but it's the most neutral speaker. So when I'm A being an amplifier, it's the best speaker for me to use. Fairly revealing on top, 
neutral, so it's easier to hear subtle differences. And boy, oh boy, were they subtle. Compare this directly to its big brother, older cousin, uncle, the Emotiva XPA Gen 3, two channel. This is a modular amplifier that has a very, very high-end switching power supply, switch mode power supply. The modules come in either two channel or mono amplifiers, modules, okay? But they're, it's still a class AB amplifier. The interesting thing here is I have two mono modules in the XPA Gen 3. In a way, it is almost like having two mono blocks. The biggest difference here is that in the XPA or the ginormous amplifier down there, they share the same power supply. Whereas the Basics A1s have a separate power supply, separate toroidal transformers. So how big of a difference was there? When I first started A-being the XPA and the Basics, I thought I could hear a difference right out of the box. And I thought there was some clarity differential, a little bit of bass differential, and not bass from like the amount standpoint, but bass from the, a little bit of bass clarity. So what I did was, and while I was doing the AB, I ran it through my one little bear, one little bear model VU3. This is a speaker and an amp switcher. So I had the main speakers going into the back of this and then the speaker output from both sets of amps going into here and then I'd press a button that switches the amplifiers. Also on here on the Akitika, Akatika, there are two places where you can um, have uh, amp amp a and amp b i was actually running amp a and amp b at the same time this is a very good preamp to be able to a b different amplifiers because you can run them both at the same time turn them off whatever the immediate thing that i thought was how incredibly similar these two amplifiers sound or these three amplifiers sound really you have you know two mono blocks and one two channel the two channel amp is $200 more though. So even if you're buying two mono blocks, that still comes in at $900. These are also easier to deal with because they're just not so big. If it wasn't for these uh, Vulcan racks, I really wouldn't be able to use this amplifier. I have another rack, but I don't use it as much because it's not nearly as usable as the Vulcan is. One of the really good things about this comparison is they have an indistinguishable level of gain. So the gains were exactly the same, at least in my ear. There was no, I did not have to change the volume at all. I could just really lean in to music. And man, I, I ended up listening for hours last night because it got to be a bit of a challenge for me because I thought I knew which amp was playing. And then what I would do, I would press this button, whole bunch of times until I didn't realize where I was at, where I was starting at, and then I would switch them back. Some songs I thought it was easier to hear, others were not. I listened to a bunch of metal last night, so Perfect Circle, Mud Vein, Corn, of course, Nirvana MTV Unplugged, Sheryl Crow. What I thought I heard was a difference in vocal clarity and vocal forwardness. I thought the XPA Gen 3 was a little bit cleaner on top and a titch more forward. I thought, but you know what? I couldn't pick them out. I could not pick them out consistently. I think the best that I did was I got three in a row, right? Correct. It was almost a joke to me because I would kept switching about, and I'm talking, these are minute, subtle, tiny details. So I would switch it and once I started from scratch, not knowing which amp I was on, it was very, it was difficult to kind of get my bearings and see, because there's a, a just a tiny slight difference. But my brain fooled me into thinking which one was which. And as soon as I get two or three in a row, I get pretty proud of myself, and then I would get the fourth one wrong. And it was such a fun experience, and I was actually laughing about it because I couldn't tell. And I've listened to a lot of amplifiers at this point. And I was listening intently in the near field. When I was right up on the speaker, it was actually harder to tell than when I just got just far enough back that I was kind of in that near field situation. So I was maybe three and a half, four feet from both speakers. Amazingly indistinguishable from 
the XBA series. Really good. Really fantastic. Comparing to Mr. Vidar up here, this is really where there is a much bigger difference between not only sound signature, but um, levels as well. There's definitely a difference in the output levels. So when I switched it to the Vidar, I had to turn up the volume a little bit on the Akatika. Sound wise, so it's difficult when you have a level disparity to hear sound differences unless you get the levels just right. But when I did, I pulled out a decibel meter on my phone and it's, it's an easy download. I think it's called Decibel X. This will give you not only levels, but it'll also give you a bit of a real-time analyzer. So you'll be able to see bop, 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 so you can see what frequency that is. Very useful tool. Not super scientific or super accurate, but it does give me a way to somewhat level match when I'm doing stuff like this. Even though there is a disparity between the Vidar and the A1s, the monoblocks, I still felt like I heard a pretty significant sound difference. If I had to describe them, the Vidar is much more forward in the vocal region. Seems less dynamic than the Emotiva stuff. Significantly lower power. So the Vidar is 100 watts into 8 ohms, uh, 200 watts into 4 ohms. Now you can bridge the Schkit Vidar. And I was having this conversation with one of my patrons last night. The problem with that is when you bridge a Vidar, Number one, you can only use an XLR to bridge it. Number two, it is not safe down to four ohms anymore. You can bridge it in eight ohms, so you can use eight ohm speakers. You may be able to get away with some six ohm speakers, but four ohm speakers that really maybe pop below four ohms, is probably gonna put the Vidar into protect. I am not saying the Vidar, well, I'm not saying the Basics A1 is better than the Vidar. I'm not saying it. it, they're different, and it's gonna depend upon which sound signature you like. The differences that I heard, I thought the Emotiva had a larger sound stage. It wasn't embarrassingly different, but there was a difference and it just seemed larger. Vidar had a sound signature that leans more towards what I would consider to be more analytical, reminiscent of the Rotel A11 Tribute, the IOTA VX, even the Yamaha, the AS801 that I just did um, when it's in its flat mode. So when you're not having any EQ or tone controls, any loudness or tone controls on the Yamaha. It seemed like the emphasis was on the mid-range and up. They're still based there, still powerful, but the Emotiva just has that sound that I really like. I did not feel like I needed tone controls on the Emotiva. And I think that's one of the reasons why I gravitate towards this Emotiva type sound, where it's it's just, to me, it sounds perfect. <laughs> Punchy on the bottom, enough detail on top. I don't have the A2 here to compare these two. The A2, I think, well, I'll put it to you this way. I did hear a difference between the A2 and my XPA Gen 3, which I should. It's $1,200 versus about $450. About $450. Almost indistinguishable. Really indistinguishable because I could not get it consistently right. I could not consistently pick out which amplifier I was listening to. And I know my methodology has probably fundamentally failed with different speaker wires going into a switch, different RCAs, but I did the best I could. And I did hear a difference. And I've used this methodology before. And when I used this methodology, there was a huge delta between the Vidar and the Emotiva. The takeaway here is, if one is interested in having gobs of power, we're talking 200 watts into eight ohms, 325 watts into four ohms at ridiculously low THDs, you're looking for an experience that rivals that of a $1,200 two channel amp that is that's in a smaller package the this is two components not even two big components so these can be stacked I don't know if you want to stack them you know most people say you can't stack them because of heat but I I push these pretty hard and it never really got hot so I think you could get away with stacking them considering they have vents on the top and the bottom and well heat so they're not right on top of each other. You're not exactly blocking events. Remarkable achievement to me that you can get 
two monoblocks. One can now get two monoblocks with toroidal transformers, mind you, at 450 bucks a piece. I have been accused of being an Emotiva fanboy. And to that, I say I am. Because I have not heard anything from Emotiva that either doesn't represent the utmost highest value in hi-fi, something like the TA-1. Or is it the TA-1 or TA-100? I can't remember. I think it's the TA-1, which is an integrated amp. With that, it has pre-outs, but that's, this, is not a, this is not a review of that. Now, I think there's stuff out there that can beat it on clarity as far as like the DAC and the phono preamp and things like that, but that doesn't really apply here. I don't think there's a company out there that is making something that is a classic design similar to what my vintage receivers are with the toroidal transformer that, that, that is that big. I don't know how they do it. I, I just don't. It's really remarkable, and it's a sound signature that I gravitate towards. At this point, some people have criticized the Emotiva TA-100 as being a bit veiled. At this point, there one cannot argue that the Basics A1s are veiled at all. They're as clean as the XPA Gen 3 2-channel, which is $1,200. It's really phenomenal. I can't recommend this enough. And I know $900 seems like a lot. The difference is you have to get these as monoblocks. There's no way that you can actually start and bridge this eventually so this is a commitment i think it's a commitment that is completely worth it for me again the xpa gen 3 was and still is to a certain extent my reference amplifier because i own it it's mine but there's hair hair's difference between these monoblocks and the xpa gen 3 a lot of difference between the vidar I didn't have any other amps in here, dedicated amps. Oh, it's different than the uh, Crown, too. So the Crown is probably the closest competition when it comes to price and functionality. And the Crown will put out more power. But the Crown just has a different sound. It, it needs the Locius to be able to get it to anything similar to what these sound like. Highest recommendation. Highest recommended. If you get these, you're, you're covering every base um, that you have. You put a good front end on them. I have the Gashelli Labs J2, very clean, very clean preamp. I, I can't say enough about it. Um, once again, Emotiva has another home run. Wonderful component. I can't say enough about it. So, if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. Man, every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms. We also have a Patreon only Facebook group and Discord server which I'm never on. I, I don't really understand Discord. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal Music. Links in the description. Click on the link. Sign up. If you do, I get a I get a couple of dollars. Even if you quit. You can also use the affiliate links. I will link these to Emotiva's website. I have an affiliate relationship with them, which means if you purchase this, I do get a commission. Also, if you're a veteran, and I think a first responder, you do and can get a discount from Emotiva which I think is a 10% discount. So a very affordable product just got even more affordable. Okay. Okay. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your new Emotiva Basics A1 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.